I am here in Papamoa, New Zealand, where I am meeting 36-year-old Alexei Zaria. Alexei was born in eastern Ukraine to then moving with his biological family to the Peskov region in Russia. He was then placed into the regional orphanage in Velukiluki Peskov. At the age of eight, he was adopted into New Zealand by a New Zealand family. This is his story. All I remember is the different orf- uh, two different orphanages that I was in. Two different orphanages. Yeah, one is like for minors to the age of seven, I think it is. So it's like a children's home. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. Is this in Ukraine or is this? No, I think this is in Russia. So, what town were you from? I was born in Dnipropetrovsk in Ukraine. But um, was moved, was put into an orphanage when I was about four. That, that was the orphanage in Peskov? Yes. Yes. So do you, do you remember that? Yes. Being moved? Well, yeah. Because um, I remember turning up in a quite a large vehicle, like an SUV yeah. truck type vehicle. And there was so many kids, but it was all sectioned off where one side was for boys, one side was for girls, and we just mixed during the day. They taught us how to clean, how to sew. How to sew? Yeah. Do you still remember how to sew? Yes. Because you're a very creative person, I know. And so did you think you learned a lot of that from your time in the orphanage? Well, also, I have a expansive, like, wide imagination. Yeah. Because I, I like to daydream, so I would have daydreamed a lot when I was in the orphanage looking out the windows when it snowed and all things like that and looking at the people walking past. And yeah. It was quite nice there, actually. Surprisingly, it was a nice orphanage compared to other orphanages that I've seen images of and heard of so i was surprised that i i lived in quite a comfortable orphanage so as a child you felt completely fine there yes you were, were you always thinking about being adopted out to a family though as always. a child always must be always on your mind well because you see other kids getting adopted and taken away and you hear stories like they're getting a new family yeah. with aunts, uncles, grandparents and, and lots of presents and, <laughs> yeah, of you know, so you just think, well, you're alone, you've got no parents, you've got no f- a family, so you'd rather want, you'd want to be adopted. As a child growing up in an orphanage, Alexei had so many questions. There must have been some difficult questions as a child, especially wondering when you would get adopted out, or yes. what's happened, or why am I here? Was that always the question that you had? Oh yes. You like I, in the orphanage, you do hear stories that uh, you, you've been abandoned. That's why you end up in an orphanage. You hear those stories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the orphanage, going around, and but. To me, I didn't really care about those stories. I just wanted to be adopted and, you know, get a nice family. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I do remember Russia quite well, like the orphanage, what it was like, how we had to go to school six days a week. You went to school six days a week? In the same orphanage. One side of the building was where you slept and played and uh, bathed and all that. And then there was a corridor halfway up a building and connecting to another building where you had the kitchen, where you ate meals, where you had different classrooms. It was a constant routine. So you'd get like um, one day, one one and a half days off. Yeah, one and a half days off. 
to go and just have fun outside. Yeah. What was your friends like in the orphanage? I think I only had three friends. Best friends? Yes. You would consider them Yeah, I would class them as best friends. Although you do get taught in the orphanage still not to trust anybody. And you be- trust in yourself. Well, because you could get backstabbed, you know. You were told this is at a young age? Yeah. From the caretakers? Uh, yes. To so just trust in yourself, believe in yourself, only look after yourself. Just always look out for yourself when you're Yeah. Ready. So if someone came at you or anything like that, you'd know that you have to defend yourself. Important too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Protecting yourself has always been important to Alexei, but there's one thing still missing. So when did you know you were going to get ado- adopted into a family? In 1994. There was this doctor that came to the hospital because, sorry, a doctor came to the orphanage, not the hospital, and he was checking on the orphans that were being adopted out yes. to make sure their health was okay and things like that. Apparently, I went up to him and kept saying, can you find me a family? You said that, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. How old were you? I was probably seven or eight. So this is around the time close to being adopted? Yeah, well, I um, remember being filmed. Yeah. With two other boys. And I just keep thinking of it as cute because they were actually mostly focusing on the two other boys who were mostly the ones being adopted out. Ah, okay, yeah. But I was there anyway and uh, Apparently the camera focused a lot on me as well. Yeah. And looking back at the video, all I seemed to was doing was eating. I think it was a bag of chips or something. Yeah. And I just kept eating. And do you remember that? No, but just <laughs> looking back on the video, I was thinking, geez, like, I was such a pig. Nah, come on. Scoffing my face away Scuffing. and... I wouldn't say such a pig and no, no, no. <laughs> no, but uh, you're, probably, you're probably very hungry. You probably just, you're like, me. There's something jo- new that you don't eat all the time, probably. Uh, probably. Thinking, oh, this is so good. I just can't get enough of this it. Is, this is what I want to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably what you're thinking. Mm. Yeah. And as you keep eating it, and uh, in part of it, I was giving some to another boy, like trying to shove it in his mouth, saying, here, eat it. It's very nice. Is this the videos that families would see to potentially adopt you? Yes. So they probably thought, this guy's a little rat bag, I think we'll choose this one. He's wanting to handle the food to all the, all the other kids. Is that probably true? Y- yes, or probably <laughs> thinking, well, he's caring, he wants to share things with everybody else. Yeah, I think so. And not just thinks about himself. See, you trust in yourself, but you also care about others. I've always put others first, other people first. You always got to look out for yourself though too. Well, yes, in a um, defensive way. Defensive way, yeah. Like if someone, if I think someone's talking about me or if someone is talking about me, back then it would be defensive mode. But then when it's just a relaxed mode with just a couple of kids, like in the video, I'd be just in my own little world, just eating away on those chips and making sure they get fed the chips as well from my hand. Share it out though. Yeah. Share it out. So you don't get hungry too. Well, so they don't get hungry, yeah. So this doctor that came and visited, what what came out of that? Well, I think that he came in 1993 when he was doing these um, health checks for the kids. And then in 94, I was viewed on the video. So someone watched it? Someone watched it, a couple of families, I think. Because I was told um, a Chinese family, an American family, and a New Zealand family uh, were interested. So of, so of course, as a child, you would have no idea what those countries were. So no. were you just, you were just wanting to be adopted at that yeah. point? What month and year were you adopted here? January. 
1995. Yeah. And you started to adjust to a, a life here in New Zealand and coming from the orphanage, remembering so much, what was it like adjusting to a completely different lifestyle here? Well, my curiosity grew bigger because you, you're not locked up in an orphanage anymore. So I just thought, oh, I've got so much to see. I can touch this, touch that, press this button. Pressing, were you a, were you a bit of a, a naughty kid then? No, just <laughs> curious. Curious, yeah. Because everything was new to me. So of I course. just thought, I wonder what this did. You're probably wondering, I've adjusted to this new lifestyle. So I would be curious all the time. You'd be thinking to yourself, I want to do this, I want to do that. All these new, this new environment, these new feelings are yes. not in Russia anymore. Everyone speaks a different language. That would have taken your head to get around that quite a lot of time. It did, but I had went straight into English lessons mm. with a Russian tutor, and I picked up the basics of English pretty fast. How fast did you learn? Well, within six months. That's very fast. Because I was put into the primary school within six months. I suppose you were around English speaking. People. Everywhere. English speaking people everywhere. Yes. So you... And I had books. You had books, yeah. Pictures and English words and I started losing more Russian as I was gaining the English language. Do you think that plays a big part of your identity though? It does. And it's sad that I lost most of my Russian. Um, but it never stopped me from knowing my origins and keeping to my own culture. It's, a, it's an important part of you as, you know, as an adoptee from Ukraine and Russia. That is yeah. who you are. So I know it may be disappointing and you may feel a bit of regret not relearning it, but it's still going to be with you there somewhere. Definitely. Somewhere? Yeah. And I know just a little bit of Russian still to get me by. And I can still read Russian. So that's not a problem. I don't think you're going to lose the ability to read Russian, I think. No, well, at this age, no, I still haven't lost the ability to read the words when I uh, look at Russian yeah. language and then when I hear Russian people speak I can pick up that they're speaking Russian so you know by certain words Absolutely. that they say. Yeah. So I just go, oh, a Russian group. <laughs> oh, there we go. These people are Russian. I, I'll go and say some hellos to them or... <laughs> well, no, I don't. I, you know what I mean. I don't go up to them and say, oh, hello, здравствуйте, привет. I just go, I just say to my friends or whomever I'm with, it's like, oh, they're speaking Russian, like, you know? And what do your friends say? They just go, okay. <laughs> That's cool. As if, like, I don't care. Oh, come on, they should care. Come on, they're your friends, you know? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. You know, each to their own. Absolutely, each to their own. I just pick it up and go find it interesting. I'd probably be able to pick up the Russian language quite fast. Completely, yeah. yeah. Alexei has always had a positive outlook on life, though when he was young, he knew something wasn't right with his health. I realised as a kid uh, growing up in Russia that there was something not right with me, with my health. It slowed me down compared to what other kids were capable of doing. But um, I still kept on trying. Because, you know, you don't want to be that kid that's like, um, people think, oh, he's not worth that type of thing. So I just kept trying to be like others, not realizing what's actually wrong with me. They did find out that I had health issues uh, when I, before I was adopted. And I was in and out of hospital in Russia as well as it could. you were, yeah. Yeah. So I vaguely remember being in hospital, I was there. And it wasn't nice being in the hospitals. I would have rather stayed in the orphanage. But at least I was 
taken to a hospital. Yeah. So, which showed that the Kiki was scared. Of course. But it was mostly when I came to New Zealand, I had a proper diagnosis with, di uh, with heart specialists and all that. When they did the scans and heart checks and all that stuff. And it came up that I had a rare heart condition called Isomenga syndrome. They said I have two holes in my heart between the four chambers. So whereabouts is that? So you have the four chambers in your heart, two up the top and two at the bottom. Yeah. And I have a hole, one hole in between the top two and a hole in between the bottom two. So the two different blood types in each chamber is mixing together. Yeah. And it's not supposed to. The oxygenated blood is mixing with the red blood cells. So that means I don't get as much oxygen going through my body, through my arteries e and everywhere. stuff. Everywhere. Yeah. So as a child, was that, was being here in New Zealand, was that easier to maintain? Or yes, because I couldn't play sports, which I got told. So I was perfectly fine with that. So I ended up wanting to just learn. Yeah. That's why I got into spelling competitions at primary school and oh, wow. yeah. always reading books and just wanting to learn new, anything and everything that was um, around me, like in different cultures, after realising that there's so much more than uh, just Russia and how many different cultures are out there around the world, which uh, appealed to my interest. You're a knowledgeable person and also a creative person, as I understand. Not creative as an artist. If someone said, draw me something artistic, it'd be probably stick figures. Oh, I'm the same. Don't, don't give me a canvas. Yeah. So it'd be probably stick figures with a circle and lines coming from it saying, that's the sun, that's me. Yeah, I know what you mean. But when it comes to photography, I just see things that, are, that stand out that other people wouldn't notice. Yeah. Things that I find unique. The shape of the clouds, the colour of the ocean, and like, if it's a day like today, it could make for an okay photo out there because of uh, the different light. Isominga syndrome is a complex and life-threatening condition for Lexay, which develops with more difficulty the older he gets. But when times get hard, he always turns to humour and positivity. Many times throughout my life, there were stages where I wasn't supposed to live to certain ages. And yet, here I am at 36, still alive. You get a real positive outlook on life though. Yeah, well, I think it's also being positive and seeing uh, um, the funny things in life. Turning sad things into humour. Turning negativity into positivity. Because why dwell when um, you're in hospital? It just makes you worse. So you had an instance with hospital, didn't you? In a helicopter, from a helicopter? Yes. I ended up in a helicopter at one point from Tauranga to Auckland. And they only said I had a couple of days left to live. And that was about three years ago. Two, oh, actually, two years ago, yeah. And here I am doing okay. It scared uh, most of my family. Of course, yeah. It would. When they heard of that. But to me, I was just, just you know, playing it as if like, oh, bugger, I never got a picture of being in a helicopter, you know? It's once in a lifetime opportunity. 
a selfie in the helicopter. Yeah. You didn't get it. No. Disappointed, no. Alexa. Disappointed. <laughs> it's good that you look at things like that, though. Well, you you have to. Yeah. When I have someone come in, I start joking, like a nurse. I crack jokes, you know. Just right away. Right away. Yeah. Like one time they tried to get blood taken from me and before the needle ever di even did anything, I just screamed. And the nurse jumped a mile, probably a million miles. And then she slapped my, my arm for giving say, her such a fright. I was going to say, she didn't slap you in the face. Oh, no. No, but she, she knew what I was doing. So. Yeah. And I was just in hysterics. Yeah. Just couldn't stop laughing from that because I thought, oh, I didn't think it would work scaring her, her, but it did. So it was like that was it. I lost control and just laughed. Just laughed. Hey, that's a good way to, good way to cope with that. Yeah. Especially if you dwell on it so much, and because I see you're a very positive person, you're a very strong person, and I know with a lot of challenges with your adoption journey as well, it's been all of that stuff has been adding up, of course. But you just look at it all as a humorous. You know, in a good way, in yeah, a good way, to, yeah. to make you feel better. Because that's... also you learn from your experiences in life. Absolutely. Like if you go through bad parts in your life, you've got to learn from it and you become stronger as a person. Yeah. If you stick to the positivity of it rather than um, dwelling on it, like I said, because God knows what would have happened to me, like, if I dwelled on the past. Whereas instead, I just kept going. I learned from the bad things that happened to me and I just turned it around and just saw the good. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Alexei has always been interested in finding the connections to his birth family. But in the beginning, he wasn't sure where to begin with the information he remembered. I've been trying to search for them for years ever since I was at least, I think, 13. I've always wanted to try and track them down. Yeah. All I knew um, from before that was just their names. Just their names? Yes. At about age 13, I learnt, or 14, I learnt that I had a half-brother and a half-sister. And so I, I learnt from someone else who told me the names of the brother and sister and so i had that all in my mind yeah all the time so i wouldn't forget their names so you always remembered yes and their ages so that i can do calculations when trying to search for them because i didn't have the money to search for have someone search for me yeah so instead, I started searching myself. I'm guessing through VK.com and yes. the contacted. Yes, but by that time I was 26, 20, oh, 27. Yeah. When I realized that VK.com existed and um, that it was a Russian social media and so I thought, I'll give it a try, go on there, look through there, go on Facebook um, and look through there. And it took me, by that time it took me about a year. From the beginning of searching in a year? Uh, from when I was 27, it took me about a year till I was about 28 nearly to actually connect the dots right, and put the names together from VK and Facebook and the parents' names and then look up on their list of family and friends to see who's on their list and match the names up to see if they match the names I already know and then find the sister who was separate and then see if she had similar names and they did match up and so I just thought well I'll try my luck 
But the thing is, there were like six different people Same with similar names. Similar names. Yeah. So I had to message, I messaged them all. But the two that really stood out was the brother and the sister. And I messaged them mostly. And the brother replied quite um, quickly. But he had no idea what I was on about. Because I was saying, is this person your mum? Is this person your father? Is this person your sister? So did you message just saying, hey, I'm looking for so-and-so. Are they related to you? Yes. And so that would have been a bit, bit of a shock for them too. It was. He was actually at first saying, why do you want to know? What's this for? And all those things. And I'm quite blunt when I um, message people or talk to people. I just said to him, look, I just want to find out if this is your sister, if this is your mum and dad, because if they are, then I'm, your, I'm related to you. What did he say? And then he told me, yes, they were, and, um, and he was a bit shocked. And, he, and apparently he said, I'll message you later, which became about two or three days later because he was apparently messaging the sister. And at the same time, I was messaging the sister too, asking the same questions. Oh, okay. But she already knew of my existence, where the brother didn't. So that's probably why the brother was obviously confused. Yes. Probably didn't mean to be, you know, what do you want from me, what do you want? Yes, but yes. I know things would have taken small steps until he would have understood exactly what was going on. Yeah, and it took time. Yeah. Because he seemed to be quite blunt like I was. Yeah. And so it was totally understandable. And I had the help of Wendy Hawk, who was also searching the same names, because I would ring her and say, look who I found. And this matches this. And these people match and they have similarities with the same names and yeah. all that. And Wendy was saying, okay, okay, over the phone and saying, okay, I'm looking at it too. Wendy Hawke plays a huge role in the adoption community. She is the current director for Intercountry Adoption New Zealand, a role that she has had for over 25 years. Wendy and her own adopted children have always been close with Alexei throughout his childhood. The support that she has helped Alexei with throughout his life has been special to him. So Intercountry Adoption New Zealand. Yes. Wendy's the director of Intercountry Adoption New Zealand. I've done, well, at the moment I'm doing work with Wendy as well with our community here. Yeah. So the connection is very close in regards to support. Yes. And so you've known Wendy most of your life and that connection and that support because of her adopting children from Russia too. Yes, and they are like family to me because I've known them 30 years. I've known them. That's a long time. It's a lot of good Sorry, support. Sorry, in four years, if... it would be three years. Bloody hell. That's crazy. I know, my maths. Time goes, time goes so fast. And time has gone so fast. Time so has gone so fast. trying to think of how long I've known people. and So three years' time, I'll be 30 years I've known them all. So Wendy's always been there for you. She has. That's, you know. And that's why I consider them as family to me. Yeah. Because they've always been there for me and they helped me when I needed help. So she helped, she was helping you guide with searching for your family? Yes, guiding alongside Yeah. with me. So whenever I found something interesting, I would ring her. And Wendy would straight away go on the same page that I'm looking at. At the same time. At the same time. Yeah. So that we would be looking at the same things at the same time, clicking on the same images so that we could piece together all the puzzles. And eventually we did because um, the messages I was getting from the sister were saying that um, she was aware of me through her aunt 
which I think was her father's sister or her mother's sister. She didn't tell me exactly, but she, the aunt knew that there was another child who was older than them. And that was you. Who was a sibling of theirs, and that was me. Yeah. And she did tell them I had health conditions. So the aunt knew all that, and of course the sister was telling me this in um, Russian, and of course I couldn't understand it all, obviously, so I used Google Translate, and then I would send these messages onto Wendy, so that she would be reading exactly the same things that I would be. I still had my doubts that, thinking this was a bit too easy, thinking it just seemed too easy to find them. Yeah, but you remembered so many names and information though. Yes. So that would have helped with the puzzle of what you're trying to find. Yes, and yeah. but Wendy was, eventually Wendy and my aunt Jenny became 99% sure that they were my family. Yeah. Especially from what the uh, stepfather, who was I thought was my biological father, but wasn't. Um, he's the biological f father to the half sister and a half brother of mine. But he wrote quite a long message to me, explaining everything. And I showed Wendy as well the whole message. From her point of view, this is this is it. Meaning, I found them. It all made sense. Yeah. What was that? What was your reaction like when you knew that was the family? Well, I was a bit nervous, anxious, excited, like overexcited, because I've always wanted to have a brother and a sister, which I've never had growing up. I did message the biological mother, and at first she thought I was just wanting money from them. But I said, no, I don't care about money. I just want to know. I just want to know yeah. information. And she just said, no, don't talk to my son and all that. But then the son refused to talk to her because he was angry at her for not ever telling him that he had a half-brother. I understand, Alexei, with their side as well in regards to finding all this out for them. Yeah, they would years be taking, later as well. Exactly, they would be taking a step back and just taking small steps like you were. Yeah, and that's all. That's all completely fine. It's just, um, of course, we get very excited and overwhelmed when we have a connection, and a lot of us adoptees, we just want to know who these people are. Yeah, but it's also like you were doing was completely right. It was just taking small steps with that and explaining your situation, saying, "Look, I just want to connect with you." So that's. Well, Such a big also, part. also, I had Wendy and my aunt Jenny helping me with phrasing how to ask them certain questions. That's good. Rather than being too blunt and scaring them away. You would have so many questions, but of course, it's trying to figure out the right questions to ask them. That's yes. appropriate because you don't want to scare them away and you want to just connect with them. Yeah. But trying to do that over online social media it's it's not it's not always easy no it isn't no but i would like to go over there and see them face to face Is because you haven't seen them face to face yet i've never met them you've never met them but you've kept in touch for quite a while oh for me uh over six years it's a long time yeah and you would like to go back and meet them i definitely would yeah definitely with, with those connections that you found with your birth family i know they're in the adoption community, there's a lot of adoptees that have a lot of dead ends and challenges and a lot of adoptees can't find anything. You know, I know many stories of many adoptees struggling with that connection. Alexia, do you have any advice on other adoptees who would like to start a search but may be afraid to or might be afraid they might not find anything? Well, there's no harm in trying. That's what I always go for because you never know what you can find if you, if you, as long as you give it a go. Got to give it a go. Um, and if you have someone that you completely have faith in, someone you can rely on that can uh, 
assist you if you're having difficulties it can help um, you become more motivated more positive the support has to yeah. be there yeah and you've got to always stay positive you have to yes I suppose you also have to put yourself in your birth family shoes too yes you know, I've got connections I still haven't found down the line grandparents and I don't know if I'll ever find them I'll be honest with you they're yeah. linked back to Kazakhstan and Ukraine as well and there's all these connections everywhere and I just think to myself I just got to keep trying and pushing yes. otherwise I'll never know and that's the motivation with hearing other stories like yourself you just wanted to know and you just kept pushing until you found something yeah well I just kept trying kept trying and I stayed positive throughout the whole thing because I never gave up and you're always prepared if anything wasn't going to turn the way you wanted to well yeah exactly that's where you you stay positive stay positive yeah even if something turns out to be negative at least you prepare yourself for any bad outcomes then you can just say to yourself that's okay and if you don't have any other information I always say don't give up that hope but also maybe try and reconnect with where you come from learn about where you come from if yeah. you can't connect with family at the moment try and connect the dots with your culture and your blood yes you know small things like that because that will help you open a chapter not a closure but it'll open a chapter of where you come from and that actually helps with yourself as an adoptee building that identity up yes and it helps you know your own culture and it's a big part of it yes yeah and it's always a good motivation because I always wanted to learn more about my own culture, where I came from, the Russian culture. Then when I found out that I was part Ukrainian, I wanted to learn more about the Ukrainian culture as well. Yeah. And just learn their ways by reading history books and going on Google looking at pictures and just seeing what the country is like and what the people are like you just always got to be eager to learn Alexei has been in contact with his family overseas through social media but his hopes for what's next is to fly overseas to finally meet them face to face I've got nephew and nieces now and I've seen pictures of them but it would be nice to actually be in front of them yeah that would mean the world to you wouldn't it it would yeah definitely but even if it's not my bi biological parents at least it's still family social media can only do so much absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah it's nothing like meeting someone face to face no yeah. face to face is it's got its ups and downs too though because you know you're learning about their life but also there'll be a lot of questions Yes. Good and bad. Yeah. But it's good to know that reality and meet them for, you know, meet them for the first time. And I assume you'll have so many questions that you'd want to ask them face to face rather than asking on social media. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But also my logic would be to always stay positive, to hear the positive things if I did go over there. Yeah. Because even whatever questions I ask or whatever information to find out if some things could be bad some things could be good you'd never know and you're okay with knowing everything I'm okay with knowing everything because at least I'll be prepared because I'd keep myself positive no matter what yeah because you need to and if it is some negative information you just turn around yeah completely and see the positive side of things just go well that's okay like although that happened and it's not good there's always something better but the journey continues yeah it's never going to stop exactly for all of us no thank you Alexa so much for sharing your journey with me and you know I your story has so many elements along the way and now you connecting further on I hope that you can go back and visit your family I do too and it's always a possibility. Hope so. Mm. You never know what the future brings. You never know what the future brings. No. Thank you, Alexei. Spasiba. <laughs> 
For Alexei, like many of us adoptees, our journeys always continue. And to support Alexei, please visit his GoFundMe link in the description below. And also, go ahead and check out the description below on ways how you can support this incredible project. Thank you.